is it worth it to get a specialty restaurant dining package on your Royal Caribbean cruise? I'm breaking down the pros and cons up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and today I'm breaking down why you would want to or not want to get an unlimited dining package on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Dining packages are really popular because they give you a fixed rate to enjoy a number of specialty restaurants on board, and a lot of people end up going with the unlimited dining package because it offers, well, unlimited specialty dining. So is it worth it or not? And a special shout out to Snowmobile, one of our viewers here on YouTube, who asked me to do a pros and cons video similar to what we did for the pros and cons of Royal Caribbean's unlimited drink package. And you know what? I think it's a great idea because dining packages, just like the drink packages, offer a value proposition, but ultimately it kind of depends on how much you're going to indulge in it or not. So today I wanted to break down the pros and cons of getting a dining package. By the way, if you want to buy a dining package, you can do so before your cruise buy it via the Royal Caribbean's Cruise Planner website. And I do advise buying it before the cruise, not just because it may save you a couple bucks, but they're not always offered once on board. So book it before your cruise, take advantage of it. All right, let's start with the pros of why you'd want to get a Royal Caribbean dining package. Chief among them, number one, it will save you money. Without a shadow of a doubt, a dining package will save you money compared to if you try to eat at the same amount of restaurants by paying a cover charge. When you go to any specialty restaurant, you're either going to have a cover charge or you're going to be paying a a la carte pricing. Basically, every item you order, you get charged for it, right? So if you go to a restaurant like Chop's Grill, you might be paying $40, $50 per person for the cover charge. And obviously, if you were to go to multiple nights, well, that starts to add up. With a dining package, you pay one fixed price, and that includes all the dining for the allocated time the dining package has. There are three-night packages. There are unlimited dining packages. So whichever one you're talking about, it will save you money compared to if you try to go to the same amount of restaurants and pay the cover charge or pay as you go. If you're wondering why the heck Royal Caribbean would offer these dining packages in the first place if they're losing money on them or they're not making as much money on them, I guess this is really the right way to look at it. And that's simply because dining packages help fill in the gaps of their schedule. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in this video, but it helps fill up the restaurants that otherwise before dining packages existed would have been a little more empty. So it's win-win for both parties. Royal Caribbean gets more people in the restaurant and of course you get a deal on your restaurant. Number two, lots of restaurant choices open up. By having specialty dining as part of your now options to choose from, you're going to have a lot more places on board your cruise ship to dine at. Certainly, there are a lot of uh, complimentary restaurants on board, but by having specialty restaurants in addition to that, well, now you have more variety, more choices, more options on where you can have meals for lunch or dinner. Variety is always a nice thing to have. I always like having choice and options, and well, having a dining package just gives you more of those choices. And another pro along the same lines is these dining packages are really useful if you're on one of the newer, bigger ships that already have a lot of restaurants on board. If you're on an Oasis or Quantum Class ship, there are a ton of specialty restaurants that Royal Caribbean has there. Back in the day, some of the older ships like Voyager Class ships or Freedom Class ships might have only had, you know, one or two specialty restaurants. But with the Oasis and Quantum Class ships, there are plenty more specialty restaurants, which give you more value to the dining package, more choices, more varieties. So you're not repeating as much unless, of course, you just want to have a lot of sushi on board, which is nothing wrong with that. But it gives you the opportunity to dine at many more options, which makes the dining package, I think, a little more valuable. Another good reason to get a dining package is if you don't love the main dining room. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the food served in the complimentary restaurants on Royal Caribbean, including the main dining room. However, it tends to be a very polarizing topic for some people. Some cruisers simply don't like the regimented times or set up the main dining room. Others may not care for the majority of the food served in the dining room menu. Regardless of what the reason is, if you have a strong opinion of going to the main dining room for dinner on most or all nights of your cruise, well, a dining package may be the perfect alternative. And the last good reason to get a dining package is if you're brand new to Royal Caribbean and you want to try a number of specialty restaurants out, a dining package is the way to do it. You know, if you watch these videos here on our YouTube channel or check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, more often than not, you're going to see us talking about places like Izumi, Chops, Giovanna's Italian Kitchen, Mason Jar, and others. And you might think to yourself, man, these places look great. I'm going on my first cruise and I want to try all these places out as well. There's no doubt a dining package is the way to do that for that particular scenario. All right. Now, those are the reasons why a dining package makes a lot of sense. Now, let's talk about why it's not a great idea. And these are the cons for a dining package. Number one, there's a large upfront cost. You know, just like the drink package, when you buy a dining package, you're going to be spending probably $100, $200 per person for the cost of a dining package. This means you're paying for it all upfront. Now, 
in my opinion, you'll get that money back in the value that you're going to be getting by going to all those restaurants once on board the ship. But for some people, a large upfront cost is hard to swallow and maybe even too much for their vacation budget to handle. So that's something to think about. Number two, and I think this is probably the number one reason I think twice about getting a dining package is it's a lot of food. So when you're only dining at especially restaurants, especially if you have the unlimited dining package, that means you feel compelled to go to a specialty restaurant every night of the cruise. After all, you're paid for the package. You want to get your value out of it, right? Well, when you're going to specialty restaurants, it's a full meal, appetizers, entrees, desserts, and sides. So as the cruise goes on, you're having all these big meals and it starts to add up. And on a longer cruise, especially seven night cruises, I think after like day three or four, you start feeling like I'm really not even that hungry anymore, but I'm going here because I have a dining package. Obviously, everybody has a different reaction altogether, but I've gotten on enough cruises and done enough unlimited dining packages that there are a couple of nights in which, you know, we're getting back from a shore excursion or we had a lot of fun up on the pool deck. And I might think to myself deep down, I really don't need to go to a specialty restaurant tonight. I just want to have maybe some tacos from the Windjammer or a sandwich or something like that and just call it even on that. But when you have the dining package, you almost feel compelled that you've got to, quote unquote, go to specialty restaurants. In addition, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that there is really good complimentary food on board. When we talk about dining packages, all too often, I think we kind of focus more on specialty restaurants and how awesome and amazing they are and really lose sight of the fact that this complimentary dining is still really good. Whether it's the food in the Windjammer, main dining room, or some of the grab-and-go places around the ship, there's lots of good choices that are out there. And it's not to say that if you go to these places, you're being served slop or anything that's really substandard. I really enjoy going to these places. In fact, I love the main dining room for having the same wait staff every night and getting to know the waiters there. And of course, the changing menu every night also really appeals to me. And then, of course, you've got some great places like El Loco Fresh, Sorrento's Pizza, and Park Cafe that have really good food that I really could eat for seven nights in a row. So don't assume that getting a dining package or eating exclusively at specialty dining is definitely worth it. Another good reason not to get a dining package is if you're staying in a suite on a Oasis or Quantum class ship, a lot of people who stay in suites, grand suites or above, get access to Coastal Kitchen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is a complimentary restaurant for sweet guests, and the food here is really good. A lot of folks who stay in suites a lot will tell me all the time they skip the dining packages because Coastal Kitchen is that darn good, and it's included with the cruise fare that they're already paying higher for as part of the sweet experience. Similarly, if you're Diamond Plus or higher, you can also get BOGO deals as part of specialty dining, which can, again, take away from the value of getting a dining package. But I think this next reason is a big reason why you don't want to get a dining package, and that is you have to wait to make reservations until you get on board a ship. When you buy any dining package, you cannot make reservations until you get actually get on board the ship. Somebody who's paying the cover charge individually can go on the Royal Caribbean Cruise Planner website, reserve the time and day that they want because they're paying full price for it. But the trade-off with getting a dining package is you must wait to get on board your cruise ship to make a reservation. Now, in the reality of things, it's, it's not that big of a deal if you're proactive enough. Every single time I've ever gotten a dining package and gone on the first day of the cruise to make all my reservations, I've never had any issues. Maybe I had to adjust like one reservation by 30 minutes or so, but I've never had any problems getting the restaurants and times and days that I wanted while on a dining package. I just had to make sure that you get there on the first day to do so. If you're the kind of see where it goes, wing it type of person, yeah, that can really backfire, especially if you wait till literally the last minute. Reservations go quickly, especially once people get on board the ship. So if you have a dining package, you must book it as soon as you get on board. But keeping in mind, you can't make reservations beforehand. This can sometimes wreak havoc with families and bigger groups where people are buying individual reservations and other people have a dining package. And the last reason you don't want to get a dining package potentially is because certain restaurants are excluded. Not every single restaurant is included. There's only a handful that aren't. We're talking about chef's table, mystery dinner theater, wine pairing dinners, and of course, room service. Now, I'm going to take all, almost all of them out except for chef's table because I think the other three are just kind of outliers that I don't even think most people even think about as part of a dining package. But chef's table is a big one because chef's table is a curated, in-depth dining experience a lot of people like, but it's not included with the dining package. Obviously, if one of these restaurants is really important to you, if you really want to get a lot of room service, well, this is not part of what's going to be included with you. Likewise, if you really have your heart set on the chef's table, the dining package does not include that, so keep that in mind. 
So there you have it, a look at the pros and cons of getting a dining package on your Royal Caribbean cruise. There's good reason, there's bad. I think if you're on the fence about it, if you really don't know what to do, I oftentimes advocate the three-night dining package because it's a low cost to get in. You're going to get a few restaurants. It's going to save you money. You're just not doing the full unlimited dining package thing. So give that a try. Go to some complimentary restaurants and work that into the mix and then decide for your next cruise which way you want to go. Let me know in the comments below, are you pro or against dining packages? What has your experience been? Does it save you money? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure you hit that like button below our video. It really does help our channel out by hitting that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon next to the subscribe button that lets YouTube know that you want to know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.